I've seen a couple of Bulls fans being worried about a, a Daniel Manchu comment on Jack Bird's Instagram. I think he said something like, see you soon or something like that. And a lot of Bose fans are reading into it a little bit, thinking that um, could, could this potentially be Daniel Mandrew on his way to Shamrock Rovers. You can call me Mystic Mac because I predict these things. What's going on guys and welcome back to LOY TV. What the hell is this? I haven't seen this thing in a while. Fan cams and reactions have not been going on for a while now, obviously due to COVID-19. So I said I'd just test out this mic and see how we got on with it. So it's an LOI transfer show today. Um, so it's gonna jump straight into it. There's a lot going on in the LOI at the moment. Um, so, so many transfers, done deals, everything really. So we're gonna take a quick look at um, the main stuff from the Premier Division and the First Division. Starting off with Bohemians, a lot going on there at the moment, it's safe to say. More outs than ins though. Uh, Andy Lyons, Danny Grant and Andre Wright all rumoured to be going to England. Um, Andre Wright is probably the only one I could potentially see staying, but I think he does want to test himself and he favours a return to England. Danny Grant is only a matter of time and Andy Lyons seems like a similar situation to Danny Grant. Um, Dan Casey is another one that's interesting as well. Couple of rumours linking him to the likes of Dundalk, so be interesting to see what happens there, but I can see him staying with both to be honest with you. Um, obviously Danny Mandrew who we will come back to touch on later on in the video. JJ Lunny as well is a player that has left the club that I touched on in the last video. So a lot of outs for Bows and they need to start bringing players in. They've obviously brought in Tyreek Wilson, which is a fantastic signing and um, really good left back, but probably the only position they didn't need to bring a player in. Uh, Anthony Breslin, obviously a fantastic player at left back already. So I'd be interested to see if this change to maybe a back five next season to accommodate both of those players. Other ones, uh, Georgie Kelly, a uh, striker. I don't. I think he will be surplus to requirements at Dundalk. So I could see potentially Bowes looking to bring him in if Andre Wright was to leave. Uh, obviously, Yo-Yo Maddy is a player they have been linked to as well. Uh, scored a heaps of goals for UCD in the first division. I think he'd be a good signing. And uh, Carol Shepard is a rumour that I've heard. I, was, when I, I thought it was a joke. To be honest with you, when I first saw it, um, I thought surely not, like his days in the Premier Division are surely over. Um, obviously he didn't play that well for Shells last season, but it's all, I think he's only 29 still. He seems a lot older than that. Whether Keith Long sees something in there that, because there is a player there, I'm convinced of it, that there is a player there. Whether Keith Long thinks he can get something out of him, uh, who knows, but I think Carl Shepard's best days are behind him, surely. Moving on to Derry City, uh, Rory Hale has been rumoured to be joining the club. I think he's on, been placed on a transfer list by his current club in Northern Ireland. So I think Derry City are looking to bring him in. Obviously he had a spell with the club before, good player. Uh, Danny Lafferty, as I mentioned in the last show, it looks like just a matter of time for that one to get the left back in. Obviously Ali Gilchrist did leave the club, so, so getting someone like that in is crucial. Uh, Peter Cherry, the goalkeeper, also left, uh, which is a big blow. Obviously fantastic servant to the club for a while he's a huge loss for Derry City um, so it'll be interesting to see where he goes and who Derry bring in to replace him newly promoted Drogheda have moved quickly to bring in two huge signings in the form of Dinny Corcoran a striker who didn't get much game time last season for Bowes obviously a bad injury the season before uh, ruled him out for a lot of that campaign and then last season Andre Wright was in really good form so it was difficult for him to break in it's a question mark for me about whether he is fit enough if his injury concerns are, are no longer there for Drogheda but if they've got a fully fit Dini Corkin and get him firing that improves their chances of staying up a lot he'll get them 10 potentially 10 goals and that could be huge for them if they can keep him fit so that's a big signing if they can I think he's what 32 so yeah he's got another two years after them I'd say uh, if he's if he's injury free of a really top striker apart from that they've brought in Gary Deegan from Shelburne very interesting signing um, but I think that's a good one for their midfield he'll bring a little bit of leadership he'll bring that character and uh, I think that's what they probably need that to stay up uh, obviously he didn't uh, inspire Shells to stay up last season a couple of his uh, actions towards the end of the season let's say probably let himself down a little bit but he'll be hoping to rectify that with Drogheda next year moving on to Dundalk um, they've moved quickly to bring in a striker Oli Eric Mix. Gogan, I want to say. Uh, he played for KI Classic in the Europa League playoff game. Had a, had a good game, scored a cracking goal in that match. And um, obviously, Philippe Bogier Vignoli liked what he saw because he moved to bring in the Norwegian striker. I think he's six foot four, so he'll be a handful for defenders. Um, that's among rumours that obviously Georgie Kelly 
probably won't be re-signing with the club. Dave McMillan's having, I think he will re-sign, but he's, he's having his uh, rumours of uh, not re-signing back. And Pat Hoban, who I've heard is potentially on the radar for some Scottish clubs. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, there have been, been rumours about, um, obviously, Michael Duffy as well leaving the club, which is uh, huge, huge news for Dundalk. Um, if he leaves, it'll be a, a huge hole in their attacking force. Um, Obviously, Sean Hoare and Sean Gannon have both left the club and are, look like the first of many departures, in fairness, um, to move to Shamrock Rovers. Those two have been really at the heart of all the success Dundalk have had over the years, so it's a big loss to lose the likes of that, the good characters in the group. And um, yeah, it's a great, two great signings for Shamrock Rovers, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so Dundalk do have a bit of work to do to replace uh, players like that, and some players like Michael Duffy are irreplaceable. We had some we had some comments from uh, Finn Harps fans over the LOI transfer show uh, on the last one saying um, we hadn't said anything about them, but they hadn't really done anything, and they've moved to bring in Ryan Rainey from Bonaghy United. Um, he's a defender before, but I think he's with Wolves, but he played higher up the pitch last season for Bonaghy United. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, Ollie Horgan decides to use him in the team. Could be a handy player to have in the squad. Um, but yeah, apart from that, Finn Harps have been quiet enough. Apart from re-signing a couple of heads, uh, Barry McNamee and stuff like that, good players to get back on board for next season. But in terms of uh, new incomings, uh, not an awful lot going on. Newly promoted Longford Town have brought in Paddy Kirk from Bohemians, a versatile defender, play a centre-back potentially, but is mainly a left-back. He'll bring a bit of Premier Division experience to Longford Town's relatively inexperienced squad um, for next season as they look to fight off the drop. They've made a couple of good re-signings as well as bringing in Callum Thompson, pacey winger. I think he was on loan at Bowes last season. Didn't get an awful lot of game time there. I think he ended up in the first division. I think it was Bray. He'll provide them with a little bit more on the, in their kind of attacking options. Um, moving on to Shamrock Rovers, the champions. They have been very, very busy bringing in Sean Hoare, as I mentioned, Sean Gannon, obviously, as I mentioned before, and the big one, Danny Mandrew. Rayu. Wow, a huge signing for, for Shamrock Rovers, a huge signing for the league overall, to be honest. Um, a lot of Boas fans obviously not best pleased with him. He had to turn off the comments on his latest Instagram post announcing his move to Shamrock Rovers because hundreds of emojis and stuff going in. You, the mind, does, you don't want to know like what was being said. All sorts of abuse going his way. Um, probably to be expected, though, in all fairness. And it looks like he will be the replacement for Jack Byrne, who looks to be set to go to Cyprus or England I think it's just a matter of time before Jack Byrne obviously I think he's in Dubai at the moment so he's living living his life having a good time over there but I think by the time he gets back he'll probably announce his departure from Shamrock Rovers um, so Danny Mandrew coming in there as his replacement what do you guys think of that is that the right kind of player to look to obviously Jack Byrne is basically an irreplaceable in terms of quality from the League of Ireland I think Shamrock Rovers need to bring in someone else for that fun trade though if, if uh, Byrne is to go um because I think they need a little bit more quality. Um, and Mandrew, I'm not sure if he's going to do I think it's a good move. I think Bradley will potentially get the best out of him. I think the way it was with Bowes was untenable. I think it was the best thing for all parties because Bowes didn't use him last year. Realistically, Bowes did not play him. Keith Ward came in. Dawson Devoy came in. Both had good years. Dawson Devoy looks like a top player. So he's a perfect replacement already lined up. So yeah, when I see Bowes fans getting like riled up over this, I'm saying like, why? There's no, I don't think they should. I don't think they should at all. I think they should just accept it and leave it because they don't. He wasn't playing last season. So like, yeah, I don't know. Bowes fans are always gonna always gonna be disappointed when a player because he he has been he was quality the first season he was with the club, of course. So they are gonna be disappointed to see him go to Shamrock Rovers. But the way it was, it was just untenable. And all the rumors about him wanting to go away on holidays when the season was restarting and then not being allowed and then the uh was it the gargles incident on uh the team news whatever so like yeah there was, a, there was just a lot of going on at Bose and him and danny manager the relationship was uh wasn't wasn't going to be um sustainable moving forward and even you could sense it from the start of the season as well there just was something about it remember he was dropped for the first game of the season against Shamrock Rovers for Bose and there was just something you could just sense something was up so yeah there were definitely disagreements between him Keith Long and the like so yeah um, Bose do need to get cracking in terms of bringing in players but I think 
Danny Manjou leaving isn't as big a loss as it may seem. But it could be a really good signing for Rovers. I think Stephen Badley is the type of manager to get the best out of him. Jack Byrne came to the club with kind of attitude problems and Stephen Badley turned him around. So there's no reason to believe that he won't do, be able to do replicate kind of similar with Danny Mandrew. Another Shamrock Rovers news, potentially the Georgie Kelly situation might be of some interest to them. Maybe bring him in as a dip, different option up top. In terms of outs for Shamrock Rovers, they're obviously bringing a lot of players in. Uh, Reese Marshall has left the club as was kind of expected with the arrival of Sean Gannon. Um, he has moved to Glen Thorne in Northern Ireland. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Liam Scales leave the club as well. There has been rumoured interest of teams in England looking at him and he was very good last season so I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, go across the pond. Sligo Rovers up next and they have brought in a couple of really really nice signings. Greg Bolger fantastic signing from Shamrock Rovers um, really really good midfielder sits there does his job keeps the ball tackles does everything you want from him perfect player to bring in for next season when they're, especially when they're going to be in Europe he's played in Europe before has those kind of big nights experience behind them which is going to be crucial for Sligo if they want to progress in Europe um, Robbie McCourt adds a lot in terms of a, a versatile option for squad depth might not be a starter had a good season at Waterford last year impressed can play centre mid uh, left back centre half so I think he's a versatile option and he'll do a really really good job for Sligo when called upon uh, obviously Romeo Parks I think is returning to the club which is a huge huge boost in their in the final third of the pitch for them that's huge and um he was i loved him when he was here for the first season he was really really good big loss last year um but yeah i can't wait to see him back in the loy ronan Cochran, rumors about him um going to dundalk which would be interesting uh obviously dundalk losing a few could be a perfect replacement for the likes of michael duffy pat hoban and with devries signing a new contract at sligo and they already have a lot of forward options and they kind of have junior they kind of have what's your man's name again so bad quick google Jesse Devers Jesse Devers that's who it is yeah uh, Jesse Devers yeah he's a good player so if Sligo were to lose Coughlin of course it'd be a huge loss but I think it's not the end of the world I don't think St. Pat's uh, have a lot of work to do they've been linked with a lot of uh, Dundalk players obviously the first few leaving Dundalk have gone to have gone to Rovers really so it looks like John Mountney is wrapped up for Pats though that is the first one that they're going to get in I think that'd be a great sign obviously been with Dundalk for a good while now so new challenge for him under Stephen O'Donnell and he'll be Stephen O'Donnell will also be looking to bring in a couple of others you've heard the links of like Jordan Flores and other players maybe I'd say Dane Massey could end up at Pats potentially um, so there's a couple of players with Dundalk uh, that O'Donnell will be sending a text and seeing what the buzz is but yeah other players uh, the, the Waterford lads Brian Murphy the goalkeeper I think will be uh, joining Pats soon I can see that happening and Sam Bone as well the defender I think he'll get the Pats as well I think that's that's one that we'll see in the next week or two go through so yeah Pats need to get busy and get signing but I think they will and we'll see some um We'll see some improvements in their squad for next season. Jumping down into the first division, uh, Bray Wanders have re-signed Brian Maher. He was unbelievable last year. Best goalkeeper in the first division. I was seeing maybe he might move to Pat or something like that, considering their keepers have kind of left. Um, I'm surprised maybe Dundalk didn't even come in potentially. He looks like a really, really top young goalkeeper. But uh, yeah, huge for Bray because they're going to look to obviously get promoted next season. So yeah, Brian Maher, huge, uh, huge re-signing. Stephen Kinsler, great signing, uh, a winger. Um, formerly of Cabin Chile, I think he was a bit last season, but he's been over with Everton before. He's naturally so, so gifted, and if they can get keep him fit, I know he has his injury problems, if they can keep him fit, he'd be a fantastic player uh, in the first division. So yeah, big signing for Bray. Richie O'Farrell from Drogheda as well, they've brought in to add to their options. So yeah, Bray looking strong in terms of uh, in terms of challenge for promotion again next season. The Alan Reynolds effect at Shells is ongoing, as you can see with the signings of the O'Connors. Kevin O'Connor and Michael O'Connor, former Wild Waterford players uh, join JJ Loney at Shelburne, all formerly playing under Alan Reynolds. So you can see the effect that he has had on these players previously, and they've been able you've been able to convince them to jump down into the first division even though I think all these players are Premier Division quality uh, you've been able to convince them to join the first division and join the kind of project so really exciting time for Shales they've also brought in Ali Gilkirst who I believe is a Premier Division defender as well so huge signings for Shales and I think their, their team could literally be stronger this season in the first division than it was last season in the Premier Division and finally Cork City um, some terrible news for them is that the takeover by Grovemore Limited is officially off leaving the club in limbo and um, really really bad news for the club and yeah crucial couple of weeks ahead and yeah I really hope Cork City can turn around I absolutely love Cork City potentially to be one of the biggest clubs in the country and they've been run 
awfully the last couple of seasons so i hope cork city gets uh, sorted out sooner rather than later but yeah guys if you did enjoy the video please do drop a like on it down below it is much appreciated and do subscribe if you haven't already with the notification bell on you will not regret it so yeah thanks for watching guys catch us in a bit